Vision of our Lord Jesus Christ celebrating Mass on Gaudet Sunday. Of the marvelous vision, in which the saint beheld our Lord celebrating Mass. On Gaudet Sunday, as Saint Gertrude prepared to communicate at the first Mass, which commences rate, she complained to our Lord that she could not hear Mass. But our Lord, who compassionates the afflicted, consoled her, saying, Do you wish, my beloved, that I should say Mass for you? Then, being suddenly wrapped in spirit, she replied, I do desire it, beloved of my soul, and I most ardently beseech thee to grant me this favor. Our Lord then intoned the Gordet in Domino Semper, with a choir of saints, to incite this soul to praise and rejoice in him. And as he sat on his royal throne, Saint Gertrude cast herself at his feet, and embraced them. Then he chanted the Kyrie lesson, in a clear and loud voice while two of the princes of the choir of thrones took her soul and brought it before God the Father, where she remained prostrate. At the first Kyria lesson, he granted her the remission of all the sins which she had contracted through human frailty, after which, the angels raised her up on her knees. At the second, he pardoned her sins of ignorance, and she was raised up by these princes, so that she stood before God. Then two angels of the choir of Cherubim led her to the Son of God, who received her with great tenderness. At the first Christ lesson, the saint offered our Lord all the sweetness of human affection, returning it to him as to its source. And thus there was a wonderful influx of God into her soul, and of her soul into God, so that by the descending notes the ineffable delights of the divine heart flowed into her, and by the ascending notes the joys of her soul flowed back to God. At the second Christ lesson, she experienced the most ineffable delights, which she offered to our Lord. At the third Christ lesson, the Son of God extended his hands, and bestowed on her all the fruit of his most holy life and conversation. Two angels of the choir of Seraphim then presented her to the Holy Spirit, who penetrated the three powers of her soul. At the first Kyria lesson, he illuminated her reason with the glorious light of divine knowledge, that she might always know his will perfectly. At the second Kyria lesson, he strengthened the irascible part of her soul to resist all the machinations of her enemies and to conquer every evil. At the last Kyria lesson, he inflamed her love, that she might love God with her whole heart, with her whole soul, and with her whole strength. It was for this reason that the choir of Seraphim, which is the highest order in the heavenly hosts, presented her to the Holy Ghost, who is the third person of the Most Holy Trinity, and that the thrones presented her to God the Father, manifesting that the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost are one God, equal in glory co-eternal in majesty, living and reigning perfect trinity through endless ages. The Son of God then rose from his royal throne, and, turning towards God the Father, intoned the Gloria in excelsis in a clear and sonorous voice. At the word Gloria, he extolled the immense and incomprehensible omnipotence of God the Father. At the words in excelsis, he praised his profound wisdom. At Dio, he honored the inestimable and indescribable sweetness of the Holy Ghost. The whole celestial court then continued in a most harmonious voice, et in tero pax benevolent hadis. Our Lord being again seated on his throne, Saint Gertrude sat at his feet meditating on her own abjection, when he inclined towards her lovingly. Then she rose and stood before him, while the divine splendor illuminated her whole being. Two angels from the choir of thrones then brought a throne magnificently adorned, which they placed before our Lord. Two princes from the choir of Seraphim placed Gertrude thereon, and supported her on each side, while two of the choir of Cherubim stood before her bearing brilliant torches. And thus she remained before her beloved, clothed in royal purple. When the heavenly hosts came to the words, Dominus Rex Chaostes, they paused, and the Son of God continued alone chanting to the honor and glory of his Father. At the conclusion of the glory in excels, the Lord Jesus, who is our true high priest and pontiff, turned to Saint Gertrude, saying, Dominus Vopis come, Dilecta, the Lord be with you, beloved. And she replied, Et spiritus mustcum, predilecta, and may my spirit be with thee, my beloved. After this she inclined towards the Lord, to return him thanks for his love in uniting her spirit to his divinity, whose delights are with the children of men. The Lord then read the collect, Deuce. Ki hang sacritus simam noctum which he concluded with the words, the Jesuum Christium filium tum, as if giving thanks to God the Father for illuminating the soul of Gertrude, 
whose unworthiness T was indicated by the word noctum, night, which was called most holy, because she had become marvelously ennobled by the knowledge of her own baseness. Saint John the Evangelist then rose, and stood between God and her son. He was adorned with a yellow garment, which was covered with golden eagles. He commenced the epistle, Hecist sponsor, and the celestial court concluded, Ipsi gloria in secular. Then all chanted the gradual special to having the versicle Audi filia et vidi. After this they commenced the Alleluia. Saint Paul, the great doctor of the church, pointed to Saint Gertrude, saying, Emula in vos, for I am jealous of you. And the heavenly choir sang the prose, Phyllis an exultant. At the words, Dum non consintiret, Saint Gertrude remembered that she had been a little negligent in resisting temptations, and she hid her face in shame. But our Lord, who could not bear to behold the confusion of his chaste queen, covered her negligence with a collar of gold, so that she appeared as if she had gained a glorious victory over all her enemies. Then another evangelist commenced the gospel exultavit Dominus Jesus. And these words moved the heart of Jesus so deeply, that he arose, and, extending his hands, exclaimed aloud, Comfortiate to manifesting the same thanksgiving and gratitude to his father as he had done when he said the same words on earth giving special thanks for the graces bestowed on this soul. After the gospel he desired Gertrude to make a public profession of faith, by reciting the creed in the name of the whole church. When she had concluded, the choir chanted the offertory, Domine Juice in Simplicitate, adding, Sanctificavit Moises. The heart of Jesus then appeared as a golden altar, which shone with a marvellous brightness, on which the angel guardians offered the good works and prayers of those committed to their care. The saints then approached, and each offered his merits to the eternal praise of God, and for the salvation of Saint Gertrude. The angelic princes, who had charge of the saint, next approached, and offered a chalice of gold, which contained all the trials and afflictions which she had endured either in body or soul from her infancy. And the Lord blessed the chalice with the sign of the cross, as the priest blesses it before consecration. He now intoned the words, Sussume Corda. Then all the saints were summoned to come forward, and they applied their hearts, in the form of golden pipes, to the golden altar of the divine heart. And from the overflowings of this chalice, which our Lord had consecrated by his benediction, they received some drops for the increase of their merit, glory, and eternal beatitude. The Son of God then chanted the gracious Agimus, to the glory and honor of his eternal Father. At the preface, he remained silent for an hour after the words purges um Christim, while the heavenly hosts chanted the Dominum Nostrum with ineffable jubilation, declaring that he was their creator, redeemer, and the liberal rewarder of all their good works, and that he alone was worthy of honor and glory, praise and exaltation, power and dominion, from and over all creatures. At the words Lord and Angeli, all the angelic spirits ran hither and thither, exciting the heavenly inhabitants to sing the divine praises. At the words adherent to dominations, the choir of dominations knelt to adore our Lord, declaring that to him alone every knee should bow, whether in heaven, on earth, or under the earth. At the tumunt potestates, the powers prostrated before him to declare that he alone should be adored. And at the silly kilorumk, they praised God with all the angel choirs. Then all the heavenly hosts sang together in harmonious concert the conquibusit nostras. And the Virgin Mary, the effulgent rose of heaven, who is blessed above all creatures, chanted the Sanctus, 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 extolling with the highest gratitude by these three words the incomprehensible omnipotence, the inscrutable wisdom, and the ineffable goodness, of the ever-blessed Trinity, inciting all the celestial choirs to praise God for having made her most powerful after the Father, most wise after the Son, and most benign after the Holy Ghost. The saints then continued the Domingue Sabaoth. When this was ended, Gertrude saw our Lord rise from his royal throne, and present his blessed heart to his father, elevating it with his own hands, and immolating it in an ineffable manner for the whole church. At this moment the bell rang for the elevation of the host in the church, so that it appeared as if our Lord did in heaven what the priest did on earth. But the saint was entirely ignorant of what was passing in the church, or what the time was. As she continued in amazement at so many marvels, our Lord told her to recite the Paternosia. When she had finished, he accepted it from her, and granted to all the saints and angels, for her sake, that, by this Paternoster, 
They should accomplish everything which had ever been accomplished for the salvation of the church and for the souls in purgatory. Then he suggested to her to pray for the church, which she did, for all in general and for each in particular, with the greatest fervor. And the Lord united her prayer to those which he had offered himself when in the flesh, to be applied to the universal church. Then she exclaimed, But, Lord, when shall I communicate? And our Lord communicated himself to her with a love and tenderness which no human tongue could describe, so that she received the perfect fruit of his most precious body and blood. After this he sang the canticle of love for her, and declared to her, that had this union of himself with her been the sole fruit of his labors, sorrows, and passion, he would have been fully satisfied. O oh, inestimable sweetness of the divine condescension, who so delights himself in human hearts, that he considers his union with them a sufficient return for all the bitterness of his passion. And yet, what should we not owe him had he only shed one drop of his precious blood for us? Our Lord then chanted Gaudet Justi, and all the saints rejoiced with Gertrude. Then our Lord said, In the name of the church militant, Refecti Saibo, etc. He then saluted all the saints lovingly, saying, Dominus Vopis come, and thereby increased the glory and joy of all the blessed. The saints and angels then sang, For the Mises, Ted sit laus et on a domain, to the glory and praise of the effulgent and ever peaceful Trinity. The Son of God extended his royal hand, and blessed the saint, saying, I bless thee, O daughter of eternal light, with this special blessing, granting you this favor, that whenever you desire to do good to anyone from particular affection, they will be as much benefited above others as Isaac was above Esau when he received his father's blessing. Then the saint recovered from her rapture, and remained more closely united than ever to her beloved. Amen.